Hi guys, today we will read the story and stare at the talking melon. Early one morning, instead, the spider woke up so sad a possum housing his watermelon patch. Estella per purchased down from a peach tree where he lived to watch possum slow progress and tell Estella as she thought milk of the melon, his favorite juice, juicy red fruit. fruit. And Pablum set his host aside as a middle midday to take a nap. And then stuck down his tree for a snack. Why Possum snorted and just and Sarah sh shimmered down his fine silk web to the ravished watermelon in the garden he picked it up a small sharp stone stone. Chip away, he could, he could just squeeze into. He gorged himself as the juicy slide down his eight spider, spider legs. Just when Anstella about had his fill, he heard Possum stir. Possum will punish me if I'm discovered, and so said to himself. He waddled into the hole in the right and one leg. At the time he tried to pull himself out, he was so slipper, slipper, he could keep his footing. He he braced himself against the edge of the hole, but the but he was so full of fruit that he no longer fit. Oh no, I'm stuck! He cried. Now I have to wait until my I string it to my normal size. Estella laid his head upon a watermelon in the intentions to sleep. He tossed and turned, wrestling. This is so boring. What should I do while well, I'm waiting? As he poured in his next pot, he heard Possum as the fall of the end row. I know I'll treat Possum into thinking that his melon talked. Possum came scratching with his hose and he nerded it. And Stella Melon, he heard a sound quiet as a mouse. Who is that? He asked. Is, is I the watermelon? And then, is, is that now you? Now I'll stop some watermelons can talk, Possum said as he cried the melon to his ear. Possum, Possum, you have never been a good listener. Watermelons have been talking since before you were born. Possum could not believe his ear, cried, Angela, Eka, I must show King Bear the discover discovery I have made of you when carrying the watermelon with a style of bouncing to an throne side to, to make a raccoon roll in the dust beside the rope. What's the hurry, Possum? Raccoon cried. I'm bringing I bring King Bear talking melon boss. Possum answered very proud of himself. Now I have heard everything, Raccoon laughed. You haven't heard me talk, but I said I replied from inside the melon to Raccoon's smart remark. Huh? What? Who said that? asked Raccoon. I did, said Sarah, really enjoying his trick. You're silly, Raccoon, for not realizing more than Amos has speech. What a man's are more intelligent intelligent than you. Do you believe me now? asked Pollum. Yes, I do. Raccoon said the smart, elegant watermelon is, some, is something the king would, would want to see. Long the path. Along the path, King Bear grunted then. Possum and Raccoon came upon the copper red and grow. They each in turn, laughed and point finger until they heard the middle strained little voice themselves. Before long, they all wanted to hear what the king would say about the arty, so off they went. When they arrived, the king, a very grisly looking bear, had just woken from his nap suffering and was a bit grumpy. What is this? he growled as the animals bowed upon him. 
Huston placed the watermelon on the tree stump before the king bear. What, what am I do, to do with this? The king asked, contained before anyone had ch chance to answer. I do not need my watermelons. I have arches of my own. This one talks. They trimmed it in unverse. I would be a fool to waste more time wait, waiting to see your tree treat as tricky and he's there as the frightened animals. You would be a fool not to wait. Pipe up and guess from Salamella. Only a fool thinks watermelon can t can talk. Fool, fool, the king bear row. How dare you call the king for for his names? And with that, King Bear picked it up the melon in his paws and chuckled. It was hard as he could fall as he could. The melon flew through the air and landed with a crab and a thump. Slid it wide open and Stella was free. He slid it as fast as he could back to the peach tree, which is which his morning started. What a great day! And Stella rejoiced that all of his fun had made me all, all of this fun had made me hungry again. He began to nibble at a large red peach above possum patch. The minute flew. Possum returned later that day with a sour look on his face. He picked up his hose and started digging fiercely. Melons, melons, he cried. Next year I will grow something else in. Else in this patch, you, you watermelons are nothing but trouble. Perhaps you should grow more peaches, and Sarah said with a mouthful of fuzzy fruit. The king sure listened to Peach. Okay, this is end. Bye.